Welcome to Life with David. I'm David, and today I have a gouge in the floor I have to deal with. We came home a few days ago and found that the cleaning people had accidentally damaged the floor in our kitchen. We have company coming over this weekend, so why don't you join me while I try to repair our kitchen floor? I'd like to spend a moment on safety. There's nothing more important than keeping you and your loved ones safe. Be sure to read, understand, and follow the safety rules for your tools. Using your tools properly will greatly reduce the risk of personal injury. And always use the appropriate eye, hearing, and respiratory personal protective equipment. Please note that the heat gun will produce temperatures of over 1000 degrees Fahrenheit. This is a fire risk and can cause serious burns, so be very vigilant when using and storing this tool. Now let's get started. When we remodeled our kitchen five years ago, we installed a heavy textured Armstrong vinyl tile that was grouted into place. It resembles a stone type product, but is more durable, comfortable, and easier to maintain. We've been very happy with it. However, the other day we noticed the cleaning people must have dropped a sharp object on it and gouged the wear surface, exposing the white substrate. Since we have spares, I could replace the damaged tile, but that involves a lot of mess. Also, the grout would have to be replaced, and I don't have any grout. But since the substrate appears undamaged, I might be able to inlay a replacement patch of the wear surface. Let's give it a try. What do I have to lose? First, I have to separate the vinyl wear surface from the substrate of the donor tile. I tried cutting the substrate off, which left a melted, jagged edge. However, I noticed the areas that had been worn by the saw separated more easily. So I tried using a little heat from a heat gun. I used the low setting and kept it moving so as not to overheat and melt the product. At about 150 degrees Fahrenheit, the vinyl wear surface could be pulled from the substrate with very little distortion. I removed a piece much larger than I needed. After scraping the back of the wear surface to remove the remaining substrate, I used an iron and pressing cloths to flatten the patch. Next it was time to fit the patch. I matched the color of the patch and then cut a small piece a little larger than the damaged area. I cleaned up the edges of the damaged area and then cut a small template using masking tape. After I stuck the masking tape template onto the patch, I carefully trimmed the patch to fit. Since I have old eyes, it took quite a while, but the patch finally fit perfectly. Then I mask off the tile and use clear epoxy glue to adhere the patch to the substrate.
tape secured the patch while the glue hardened. After the glue cured, I removed the tape and used Gugon, which is a mild solvent, to clean the area of tape adhesive. Then I scraped the glue line with my fingernail. The result was better than I expected. The repair is invisible unless the light hits it just right and my wife couldn't find it at all. It also appears very durable. Thank you for joining me today. It wasn't a high-tech project, but it saved me the time and trouble of doing a full tile replacement. I'm really pleased with how the patch blends in with the rest of the tile and how durable it appears. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If not, give it a thumbs down. And leave a comment or suggestion for things to do. I hope to do more of these videos, so please subscribe and click on the bell for notifications of new videos. Let's get together next time for another day in Life with David. See you soon!